uh, whenever I push play, I feel like my mind goes blank. But uh, I have George here swimming in the background for your viewing pleasure. Say hi, George. He's shy, I guess. <laughs> oh, there he is. <clears throat> anyway, I'm kind of vlogging today. Actually, there was a story I wanted to tell. Oh, yes. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of a random story, but... Um, so I'm starting um, clean eating today and uh, clean thinking, I guess. I've never heard it called that, but we'll say clean thinking. Um, my health has been weird in the last four or five months. I was going up, improving before summer, and then summer break hit. I got a job that turned out to be weird, like the job wasn't weird, I was just baking pie, but um, the dynamics were weird, and anyway, stress, piled on stress, piled on bad eating, piled on, I had kids home all summer, <clears throat> a little congested. <laughs> um, anyway, so today is the first day of my clean eating and my clean thinking, um, positive self-talk. I'm going to do that. Um, I already had a great breakfast. Mostly I didn't finish it because I had to run kids to school. But I had veggie, a veggie stir fry with olive oil and then some peanuts and a couple scrambled eggs. Um, I'm not doing dairy and I'm not doing sugar. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm not going to have like starchy foods. I'm not going to have like white flour, potatoes, because sometimes French fries are like my, my loophole. I'm like, it's a vegetable. <laughs> um, and if all I had to eat was French fries, I could eat a lot of vegetables and tomatoes because that's ketchup. Anyway, so uh, I'm knocking those off the the, uh, the yes list and onto the no list, but um, I'm excited. And uh, today I went to Sprouts to get myself some magnesium because I think one of my issues is um, I don't want to get too close, you know. Anyway, one of my issues besides my ADD. Oh, um, it's, I get bad PMS, and it's taken me a while to realize that that's what it is, but I have a week or so before I start my cycle where I just, I never get suicidal, but I do daydream of being homeless. Uh, like, I would much rather be nobody on the street than the me so I mean it's it's a probably a couple steps up from suicidal but it gets very bad my poor kids I have one daughter in particular um, that um, she, she worries about me they all worry about me but she she uh, she walks over randomly and she just says I love you mom do you know that I always feel guilty when that happens. Like, yes, I know that. Um, anyway, I need to get better. It, it, for me and for my family and for my dreams. My hair is getting long and weird. Anyway, I, um, as a wall, uh, no, at, at Sprouts this morning, I needed to get some magnesium because I got some calcium a couple weeks ago, and boy, that stopped me up. Just cold turkey. Just stopped going to the bathroom, which is used to be normal, but for the last long time it has not been normal. I hiked the Grand Canyon totally constipated. Down into the bottom, back up to the top in 11 hours. Very proud of myself. 40 pounds overweight. Totally out of shape. 
super sedentary, at least for the last month or more. Um, anyway, went to Sprouts, got some magnesium citrate to help me citrate, citrate, citrate. Mm, I don't know. Anyway, because it pulls water into the bowel. And uh, while I was in line checking out, a man came and said, do you want some skinny pop popcorn? I accidentally cut a hole in the bag just now opening the box. And I was like, sure. Um, and it reminded me, I try not to take too long. It reminded me of when I was a kid. We lived next to a, to, uh, next to a corner market called Paul's Corner Market. Paul was a butcher, but he also sold penny candies and groceries. I know he was a butcher because when we would get a deer, my dad would take it over there and Paul would package it up in nice packages and we'd put it in our freezer. White butcher paper. But the hostess man came to Paul's Corner Market. I don't know how often. We left Preston, Idaho when I was eight. So all of this happened pre-eight, very young. But um, I do remember that we would, um, I, I would search for pennies and lost change from my dad's pockets and the couch cushion. And if, if I found a dime or something, I was like, yes! Because I would rush over to Paul's Corner Market and get 10 penny candies in a paper bag. Uh, and it was marvelous, absolutely marvelous. Um, but when the, I remember this one time, the hostess man came, he pulled up, he backed up into the, a parking space that was on the side of the market that was next to our house. And we were there, I think there were their neighbor kids and my sisters and I, we, um, we walked over there and we just watched him like hawks. Greedy little hostess grubbing hawks. And uh, he just did his thing. I'm sure he smiled at us, but he just did his thing, loading up his dolly with boxes and taking it in the back door. Everybody got bored and they left. But me. Me, the one that can hike down into the Grand Canyon back up again in one day, as fluffy as I am. I waited. I endured. And you know what he gave me? A package of Twinkies. Yeah. I won. That was, I could claim that for many years, a lot of years, until I realized that it just wasn't that exciting, that for me to stand there for, you know, probably 15 or 20 minutes as a five or six year old, that was huge. Yes, huge is probably an operative word here. Not uh, a good one. Anyway, they were delicious Twinkies. I don't think I shared. I don't think anyone else deserved the Twinkies because they didn't wait long enough. They could have waited. My arm is starting to shake because I don't have a good way to let you see George while I'm telling my stories and hold my phone, except for with my huge arm. Anyway, that's the end of my story. Wish me luck on my adventure that has no Twinkies in its future.